Before we get into this week's video, I wanted to let you guys know about a super easy way that you can grow your Amazon wholesale business in under three minutes per week. And so that is gonna be by subscribing to my newsletter, which is gonna be in the description below. It's called the Amazon Wholesale Newsletter. And once a week, I send out an email to over 2,000 people that includes just one super actionable, super easy to implement tip that can really help you scale your wholesale business a lot quicker. So if you're interested in signing up for that newsletter, like I said, the link is gonna be in the description below. And with that said, let's get right into this video. Finding suppliers is by far the hardest part of running an Amazon wholesale business, but there's one tool out there that makes the process 10 times easier, especially if you're looking for brand direct wholesale leads. And that tool is called Smart Scout. So we've been a Smart Scout customer for over three years. It is my favorite Amazon tool by far. And it's one that we use religiously in our business. We use it every single day and it is going to help you find brand direct wholesale accounts 10 times faster than if you were to do it manually. And if you're interested in checking out Smart Scout for yourself, I'm going to have a link in the description below where you can take 25% off your first three months of Smart Scout. So that's going to give you a discount if you decide to check out the software for yourself. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you in real time exactly how I find brands to contact to open wholesale accounts with using Smart Scout. So if we jump into my camera here, this is the Smart Scout dashboard. So this is the main page here. And you'll notice on the left hand side of the screen, there is a brands tab in the key tools section. So I'm going to click on brands and I'm going to do a couple of things here. So I'm actually just going to come up here to category and I'm just going to choose a category. So in this case, let's choose grocery, right? This works for any category. I'm just using this as an example. So I'm not going to set any other filters and I'm going to click search. All right, so you can see that's gonna give me 47,982 brands in the grocery category. So now we obviously wanna filter down a little more. So the first filter that we're gonna set is we're gonna set Amazon in stock rate to maximum 60%. So that just means that Amazon has been in stock across all the listings for that brand a maximum of 60% of the time over the last 90 days. And something to keep in mind is these filters aren't perfect. So you'll see here shortly, we're actually going to go in and double check that these filters are accurate within the actual Amazon page. Okay. So the next filter that we're going to set is we're going to set the average number of sellers filter to be a minimum of three. Now, the reason we do that is we want to filter out any brands that are likely to be private label brands because typically private label brands are only going to have one seller, right? And some sellers might have one or two accounts. So this is going to filter out the vast majority of private label brands. So you see, we're already down to 11,477 brands from that number of what, 47,000, something like that. So we're actually going to take it one step further and filter a little closer. So we're going to filter monthly revenue estimate. Uh, so this number here is arbitrary if you're targeting smaller brands you can set this lower if you're targeting bigger brands you can set it higher but let's just say i want to look at brands that are doing a minimum of thirty-five thousand a month in revenue and let's just say a maximum of five hundred thousand a month in revenue all right so that's going to give us a pretty wide range of brands to contact so we see now we're down to 1539 brands right all right, so we filtered down the number of brands significantly, and now we can dig in and start to look at these brands a little closer. So what I like to do is I like to filter, or sorry, I, I like to sort by monthly revenue estimate, and I wanna see the smallest brands first and kind of work my way up. That's just the way I've always chosen to do it. So here we've got the brand names on the left. We can see the average number of sellers, the average sale price, the monthly revenue estimate. All of these, uh, all these are great metrics, but what we're going to do is we're going to open a few of these brands up in a new tab and check them out on Amazon. So I'm going to open these first three. Uh, actually, so you see the second one here is Little Debbie's. I know that Little Debbie's is a huge brand, actually. They're owned by like a ConAgra Foods or Nestle, one of those huge companies. So I'm actually going to, we're not going to look at Little Debbie's only because, like I said, I know that they're a really big brand that's probably going to be next to impossible to get a brand direct account with. Because for this exercise, we're targeting brands that are like smaller to midsize, where we can go directly to the brand and have a relationship directly with the brand. Uh, so Bustello, I don't know if that's a big brand. Coach's Oats, I don't think that's a big brand. So we're going to look at those two first. So Cafe Bustello. All right. So here we see uh, we've got a couple of different listings for this particular brand. And now when we're here on the Amazon page, I'm looking at a couple of key factors. 
So the first thing I want you guys to do is I want you to download, it's a Chrome extension and it's completely free. It's called DS Amazon Quick View, right here, DS Amazon Quick View. And what that is gonna show you, that's gonna give you this box right here, right? It's gonna show you the rank, it's gonna show you the category that it's in, it's gonna show you the ASIN, and then whether there are FBA sellers on the listing or whether if Amazon is on the listing, there'll be a little purple Amazon, or sorry, a little orange Amazon box right here. So this kind of tells us at a glance, it just gives us a snapshot of what's going on in the listing, right? So the first things I'm seeing here are uh, this particular listing is ranked 17K in grocery. There's three FBA sellers and it looks like Amazon is not on the listing because there's no Amazon button here. And so there's, a, there's really two key things that we're looking for anytime we are analyzing a listing like this before deciding whether or not we're gonna reach out to the brand. So the first thing we wanna know is, is there existing FBA competition on this listing? Which in this case, it looks like there is, right? There's three FBA sellers and that's good. We want existing FBA competition because we know that if there's, ex if there's FBA sellers selling this product, they're getting it profitably from somewhere, which means that we can probably find it profitably as well. So this product checks the first box. There, there's existing FBA competition. The second thing we wanna verify is that uh, Amazon is not dominating the listing, right? And in this case, Amazon is not dominating the listing. If we hover over the title here, we see the keep -a graph pop up in the bottom right. So I know it's hard to see my, uh, I know my picture is covering the keep -a graph here, so we can open it in a new tab and I can show you that. So in this particular case, like we said, Amazon themselves is not on the listing here, right? So uh, it checks that second box. So there's existing FBA competition. It's not dominated by Amazon. And then the third thing that we want to check for is we just want to make sure that any brand we're considering reaching out to has at least a couple, one or two, ideally more products that are already selling well. Okay. So because of the fact that we filtered by monthly revenue estimate, we know that this brand is going to be selling at least around 35 K per month total across all listings, but we want to make sure that they have at least one or two listings that, the listings themselves are selling well, right? And now when I say selling well, I don't wanna give you a hard and fast criteria of, oh, it's gotta be selling at least 100 units a month or at least 300 units a month. Because depending on where you are in your journey, you if you're a newer seller, you might be perfectly fine with a product that you can sell 50 units per month of. But if you're a bigger seller that's more experienced, you might not settle for anything that sells less than 500 units a month, right? It just depends. So in this case, Amazon is actually telling us this particular listing is selling over 600 units per month. Again, that's one listing that's selling pretty decent. Uh, so that to me would be enough for me to be willing to reach out to this brand, right? So what I could do, so it actually looks like uh, this brand is owned by Nespresso, which again, is like a Nestle, probably, they're probably owned by Nestle, which is a huge, huge food conglomerate. It's gonna be next to impossible to get a brand direct account with Nestle for Nespresso. So this isn't the best example, but the process is the same every time, right? Again, it meets the two criteria. There's existing FBA competition, not dominated by Amazon, and this brand has at least one listing that's selling well. Right? Sorry, three criteria, not two. All right, so that's the first example. Let's take a look at the second example here. So it's called Coach's Oats is the brand. And all right, so really Coach's Oats looks like they only have two listings here on Amazon. One of them has one FBA seller, one of them has six FBA sellers, okay? So at least one of these listings has existing FBA competition. Um, so it, it looks like it meets the first criteria, right? This particular listing, if we click into it, it looks like, so Coach's Oats, so the brand themselves is the only one on this listing. If we look at the keep -a graph, they don't allow any other resellers. So that particular listing is probably not one that we would wanna go after, but this one right here that has six FBA sellers uh, might be a better fit. And so again, it has existing FBA competition. It's not dominated by Amazon. And uh, at least one listing is selling well, over 300 units bought in the past month. That's a decent amount. And we're seeing other sellers here, right? We're not just seeing the brand, we're seeing other third parties. So anywhere from you know five to eight different resellers on this listing at any given time. So that tells us there is existing FBA competition and therefore we might have the opportunity to source this product at a profit from somewhere. So we would just Google search Coach's Oats, look for their contact information and either send them an email or call them and ask for a wholesale account. 
let's see if we can find one or two more examples. All right. So let's try uh, some random brand names maybe that I don't recognize. So again, Hamburger Helper, Kellogg's. These are like huge brands owned by huge companies. We know that the chances of us getting a brand direct account with Kellogg's is probably pretty slim, right? So we're targeting these smaller to mid-sized brands. Um, let's maybe look at Paisley Farms. Okay. So here I'm seeing, this is, looks like a hot sauce brand, Chillerito, right? And again, every time we open a new brand and a new tab like this, we're running them through our three criteria. We wanna know is there existing FBA competition, which every one of their listings has FBA competition and it looks like they're not dominated by Amazon because I'm not seeing that Amazon badge. So this brand looks to meet that first criteria. Second, is it dominated by Amazon? I know my picture is covering up the Keepa there in the bottom right, but I can assure you just by looking at it, Amazon is not dominating any of these listings. Amazon is not even on any of these listings. And then third thing, again, is this brand have at least one or two listings that are selling decent to make it worth our while to reach out and ask for a wholesale account? It looks to be the case, right? This main listing here selling over 600 units per month. This listing here selling over 100 units per month. This listing 100 units. This listing 100 units. This listing 100 units. So this brand looks to me like it meets all three of our criteria, right? So what you would do is you would just Google search the name Chillerito. Uh, I don't know if they're owned by another company or not, but you would find the manufacturer's website. You would either send them an email or give them a call and ask to open a wholesale account to purchase this specific product. And then let's look at this last one here. So this Paisley Farm, again, running them through our three criteria. Existing FBA competition looks to be the case, right? Five FBA sellers on both of their two main listings. Not, dom not dominated by Amazon. So again, looking at the Keepa. Uh, Amazon is not present on any of these listings. So you see here that when, a, when Amazon is on a listing, you'll see this sold by Amazon badge here. So this particular listing is dominated by Amazon. This one is dominated by Amazon, but these two right here are not. Okay. So there's two listings that are not dominated by Amazon. And again, for our third criteria, these two listings seem to be selling at a decent clip, which making it worth our while to reach out to this brand and ask for a wholesale account. All right, so that is our process for finding brand direct wholesale accounts in a nutshell using Smart Scout. It is the best tool on the market by far. If I mean, we, you can do this manually, right? You don't need a tool to do this to find brand direct leads, but it's gonna take you literally five to 10 times as long. So like I said in the intro, if you're interested in, take, in checking out Smart Scout for yourself, there's a link in the description below. You can take 25% off your first three months. It's a fantastic tool. We use it every day and we've been using it for three years. So thank you so much for watching. If you want more wholesale content from me on other social media platforms, follow me on Instagram at Ganim Corey and on Twitter at, sorry, Instagram is at Corey Ganim. Twitter is at Ganim Corey. So thank you so much for watching and I'll be back later this week with more videos.